the Wright brothers. Orville and Wilbur Wright were more than inventors. Their curiosity and hard work turned a childhood dream into the first powered flight, changing history forever. Wilbur Wright, born on 16 April, 1867, and Orville Wright, born on 19 August, 1871. They were the sons of Milton Wright, a churchman, and Susan Catherine Corner. The brothers were part of a family of seven children. Wilbur and Orville were known for their distinctive first names, chosen by their father, who avoided middle names. They were Will and Orv to their friends in Dayton, and their neighbors knew them as the bishop's kids. The family moved frequently due to their father's role as a bishop, ultimately settling in Dayton in 1884. In 1878, Bishop Milton Wright brought his sons, Wilbur and Orville, a rubber band-powered flying toy invented by a French inventor, Alphonse Pinot. The toy was a small wooden rubber band powered helicopter that could spin and hover when the rubber band was wound and released. It was a simple mechanical toy, but it sparked the brothers' fascination with the principles of flight. According to Wright brothers in their later years, the toy was an important influence on their lifelong passion for aviation. Wilbur and Orville Wright, though both attended high school, did not graduate. Wilbur missed receiving his diploma due to the family's move in 1884. Wilbur's injured in a hockey accident in 1885 lead to health problems that prevented him from attending college. He stayed at home and cared for his ill mother and assisted his father in church matters. Orville left high school early to start a printing business in 1889 published a newspaper named West Side News, and Wilbur joined him as editor. On 4th of July, 1889, their mom, Susan Catherine Corner Wright, died from tuberculosis. In early 1890s, they saw newspaper or magazine articles of the dramatic glides by Otto Lilienthal in Germany. In 1892, the brothers capitalized on the bicycle boom, opening the Wright Cycle Company, where they repaired, sold, and later manufactured bicycles. Profits from this venture funded their growing interest in flight. Inspired by Otto Lilienthal, in 1896, three key events in aviation stood out as different pioneers showcased their gliders. Tragically, Otto Lilienthal was killed when his glider crashed. This event deeply impacted the Wright brothers and sparked their serious interest in flight research. Wilbur said, Lilienthal was without question the greatest of the precursors and the world owes to him a great debt. In May 1899, Wilbur wrote a letter to the Smithsonian Institution requesting information and publications about aeronautics, drawing on the work of Sir George Cayley, Octave Chanute, Lilienthal, Leonardo da Vinci, and Samuel Langley. They began their mechanical aeronautical experimentation that year. The Wright brothers focused on mastering control before attempting powered flight, inspired by Otto Lilienthal's gliding experiments. They believed control was the key, along with wings and engines. Wilbur, observing birds, noticed how they adjust their wings to roll left or right. He applied this idea to their flying machine, discovering wing warping as a way to achieve it, after experimenting with a twisted inner tube box in their bicycle shop. In 1899, the Wright brothers tested wing warping with a biplane kite that had a five-foot wingspan, proving controlled rolling motion. In 1900, they started manned gliding experiments in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, chosen for its steady winds and soft, sandy landings. 
This location also kept their work private, away from the media. Their mentor, Octave Chanute, visited them each year from 1901 to 1903, but never saw their powered flights. Wilbur made about a dozen free glides on October 20, but the glider's lift was less than expected. Despite this, they were encouraged by the successful operation of the front elevator and the lack of accidents. They adopted the Chanute Herring biplane design and used cambered wings for better lift. Though they didn't discover camber, they benefited from the research of Sir George Cayley and Lilienthal. They also used a modified version of Chanute's truss design for support and added a horizontal elevator to prevent nosediving. At first, Wilbur thought a tail wasn't needed, so their first two gliders didn't have one. Wilbur did most of the gliding until 1902 to protect Orville and assert his leadership. In 1901, the Wright brothers returned to Kitty Hawk with better preparations, including a workshop and hangar. They built a larger glider and made many flights, reaching distances of 50 to 400 feet. Despite issues like stalls and yaw, the forward elevator helped with safe landings. However, the glider only produced about a third of the expected lift, leading to frustration. The poor results made the brothers doubt the accuracy of Lilienthal's data and lift calculations. Wilbur was disappointed and even questioned if human flight was possible. Not within a thousand years will man ever fly. The Wright brothers made key progress with wind tunnel tests on 200 model wings, discovering that longer, narrower wings offered better lift. The brothers made the rudder movable and connected it to the pilot's warping control. This allowed simultaneous control of both the wings and rudder, helping maintain level flight. In 1903, they built the powered Wright Flyer. The brothers designed their own propellers after realizing there were no existing formulas for aeronautical propellers. Their twin pusher propellers were highly efficient with modern tests. They also needed a lightweight engine and after failing to find a suitable one for manufacturers, their mechanic, Charlie Taylor, built an engine in six weeks. The Wright brothers' journey to the first successful powered flight was full of challenges, including repeated delays and technical difficulties. Their first powered test flight occurred on December 14, 1903, coinciding with the 121st anniversary of the Montgolfier brothers' first hot air balloon flight on the same date in 1782. The Wrights made four successful flights in freezing conditions with five witnesses present for the historic flight. The final flight of the day made by Wilbur was the longest at 852 feet and lasted 59 seconds. After the successful flight, Orville sent a telegraph to his father read as, Success! Four flights Thursday morning, all against 21-mile wind. Started from level with engine power alone. Average speed through air 38 kilometers. Longest 57 second. Inform press. Home Christmas. However, a telegraph operator leaked the message to a newspaper which led to an inaccurate news article. The 57 seconds Orville mentioned in the telegraph was misinterpreted as the total duration of the four flights, while it was actually for the longest flight. 
As a result, the Dayton Journal refused to publish the story, deeming the flights too short to be significant. In Paris, however, members of the Aero Club of France took the news more seriously, leading to increased efforts to match or surpass the Wright brothers' achievement. In 1904, the Wright brothers built the Flyer II. Despite early challenges, they made significant progress, including the first complete circle flight on September 20. Over the next few months, they achieved flights lasting up to five minutes and covering nearly three miles. They were convinced that they had created a practical flying machine that could be sold. They were determined to protect their invention and refused to give demonstrations without a signed contract. This decision led to skepticism. As a result, the Wright brothers remained in relative obscurity. Ernest Archdeacon, the founder of the Aero Club de France, became a vocal critic, accusing the Wrights of bluffing and declaring that the French would be the first to publicly demonstrate powered flight. However, this skepticism was silenced in 1908, when the Wright brothers performed successful public flights in France. This marked a turning point in the European perception of the Wrights, who had struggled for years to gain recognition for their pioneering work in powered flight. The Wright brothers expanded their legacy by forming the Wright Company on November 22, 1909. Wilbur became company president, Orville became vice president, and the headquarters located in New York City. They set up a factory in Dayton and a flying school and test field at Huffman Prairie. In 1910, Wrights redesigned the Wright Flyer plane, moving the horizontal elevator to the back for improved control at higher speeds. The new design was called the Model B, which was $5,000. Wilbur Wright, a lifelong bachelor, was deeply focused on his work and often remarked that he did not have time for both a wife and an airplane. In 1909, a short, silent film, Wilbur Wright, on sign of Flug Machine, showcased the first use of motion picture aerial photography, filmed from a heavier-than-air aircraft. Unfortunately, Wilbur died from typhoid fever in 1912 at the age of 45. Although Orville shared Wilbur's distaste for business matters, he was more adept at handling the company, which he sold in 1915. The Wright Company eventually became part of Wright Martin in 1916. Orville Wright died on January 30, 1948, at the age of 76, after his second heart attack, having witnessed the transition from the horse and buggy era to the age of supersonic flight. He was buried beside his brother at Woodland Cemetery in Dayton, Ohio, where both brothers rest. Today's aviation owes its foundation to the pioneering efforts of Wilbur and Orville Wright. Their dedication to innovation and engineering laid the groundwork for the advanced airplanes and global air travel we enjoy today. Thank you for watching.